Oh, look. Disney and Lucasfilm each stuck a foot in their mouth again. How about we stick another right up their ass? So, here we are again. I'd chalk this up to deja vu, but nah, it's just Hollywood being stupid again. For those not in the loop, the new Disney Plus series Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi released last week, and frankly, it hasn't gone over too well. Mind you, I saw this coming. That's why I put out a rather depressing video recently, mulling over what the plot leaks meant for Star Wars as a whole. Check that out for full context on my current feelings about Star Wars. Now, this Obi-Wan Kenobi series happens to feature a female person of color in a prominent role. A role that is superfluous and, as many have pointed out, rehashed from another Disney Star Wars project, specifically Jedi Fallen Order. A female POC Sith Inquisitor, formerly a Jedi Padawan, who is on a rage-fueled tear across the galaxy that will ultimately... Well, okay, I guess I don't want to bring the plot leaks into this. But like I said, it's a rehash of something that was just done a couple years ago and, to be honest, seems like it was handled much better in that game. But because this new character is played by a black actress, Star Wars has officially started borrowing her race card to use as a shield to deflect all criticisms. You think the character is poorly written? You're racist. You think the premiere as a whole was shoddily produced? You're racist. You think Obi-Wan Kenobi should be the most prominently featured character in a series called Obi-Wan Kenobi? You're racist. But that's not all, folks. Because this actress, Moses Ingram, is also a woman. That means male critics are having the misogyny bomb lobbed at them too, which again, feels all too familiar. Let me say this now. I've always been against people harassing actors over a role they play. Typically, actors are like anyone else. They accepted a job offer. You would probably do the same in their shoes. It's the director, the writers, the casting directors, the producers, the studio executives, and basically everyone above the actor's level who should get the blame depending on the particular complaint or critique being made. They're the ones making the bulk of the decisions on any movie or TV show. And when it comes to actual racists, the ones who truly dislike this actress and her character based on the skin color alone, to hell with them. Why would anybody even pay them any mind? They don't matter. This actress probably did get a couple of messages sent to her from legit racists. And probably a couple of dumb edgelord teenagers too. And that sucks. It really does. But the insincere virtue signaling from Disney and Lucasfilm is dumb. As a former network executive, I have the requisite training and years of experience to fix this tweet. <laughs> there, I left in the introduction of the actor and her character and the positive final sentence and removed the implied threat towards Star Wars fans. To paraphrase RK Outpost, saying racism is bad is like saying kicking puppies is bad. We fucking know that already, dipshits. But we see you, Disney. We know what you're doing. This tactic is old and tired. You're making mountains out of anthills so the general word of mouth changes. You don't want people spreading word that Kenobi kinda sucks and it's another Last Jedi. You're trying to make it seem like all of the criticism is coming from hateful racists and card-carrying members of the He-Man Woman Haters Club. Never mind the fact you altered the sequel trilogy posters overseas to minimize the importance of your most prominent black character, or that you turned him into a clown who did nothing but pine after the main white chick, and poor Oscar Isaac. Y'all decided out of left field that his character was a drug dealer. It doesn't help that Moses Ingram also came out the gate saying it was time for Star Wars to change, even while admitting she knew absolutely nothing about Star Wars. Including the fact that some of the most popular characters from several different areas of Star Wars are minorities. But nah, she just assumed the cast of every Star Wars project ever looked like Casper the Friendly Ghost's family reunion. Honey, people don't dislike you because of your skin color. It's because you said something ignorant. But we can't take personal responsibility now, can we? Project, project, project! But Star Wars stands with Moses Ingram. Interesting how they didn't make a similar statement for Rosario Dawson, who is still being called terrible things online after seemingly baseless accusations from several years ago. The show she appeared in, The Mandalorian, is generally well received. I guess they don't need that shield. Or Gina Carano, but hey, she told an inconvenient truth and is a white chick, so she had to go. Interesting indeed. And now, a history lesson. This particular brand of gaslighting has been going on since at least 2016. I remember it well. That ill-advised all-female Ghostbusters remake was being marketed, and we all knew it looked like garbage. Every joke in the trailers fell flat, not to mention the Ghostbusters remake was unneeded, but more importantly, unwanted. Poor James Rolfe. All he did was post a video on Cinemasker telling his viewers, who were asking for his opinions on the new movie, by the way, that he wasn't going to see it, that it was clearly targeting a new audience and was not made for him and that nobody should expect him to do a review. That's it and that's all. 
as harmless as it gets. The shitstorm that man faced still blows my mind. The media caught wind of it, turned it into a thing, and suddenly he's the face of misogyny. Noted Hollywood dunce Patton Oswalt even got in on the action, publicly insulting James Rolfe simply for choosing not to see a movie. That was a great move. Definitely earned some points there, I guess. That was just a preview of how things would go. That was 2016, and this tactic is still being used in 2022. The same shit's being pulled with She-Hulk as we speak. See, obviously people don't dislike the She-Hulk trailer because of the 2002-ish CGI, the stupidity of Professor Hulk, or the several atrocious lines of dialogue. Nah, people are hating She-Hulk just because it stars a woman. Get. A. Grip. Hey Hollywood, stop hiding behind women and minorities. Hey viewers, stop giving your monies to companies that hate you. I've canceled damn near all of my streaming service subscriptions, and you know what? It feels good. I'm baffled, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.